Uh, hi, welcome to Parametric House. In this class of tutorial, I want to show you how uh, you can convert a surface. So you can see this is the base surface I have used uh, in this project uh, into a series of uh, strips, which we can control. Uh, first, we're going to talk about evaluate surface, how you can uh, define a point attractor, which is going to define the direction of these surfaces, as you can see here. Uh, then we're going to talk about how many uh, layers we need. Uh, and at the end, we can also add an extra layer uh, at the top and the bottom, which we're going to explain how we can control that. Uh, at the end, we're going to get the final result, which is going to be two, three branches. And if I bake that in Rhino, you can see that in layer one and bake that into layer two. And we'll have those two layers in uh, Rhino. We can use that in our project. So basically, this lesson is going to help you to understand uh, how to control uh, contours, how to uh, manage the layers. The most important part is how we can add uh, these surfaces for the split surface into one group. And then finally, we can have them in Rhino by just baking them uh, at the end. Uh, okay, let's get started from scratch. Uh, first, what I want to do is to turn off everything and explain this step by step. Uh, the first step is really easy. You just have to have the base surface uh, or a NURB surface, which I have explained that you can see that this is the surface I have internalized, so you can use it in your project. Uh, after producing the surface, uh, we have to use the surface evaluate surface component. The evaluate surface uh, extracts a point. Let me just uh, disable everything so I can explain the step by step. And as you can see here, we have a point here. Uh, if I turn on the evaluate surface, you can see it's also giving you a plane, which is going to be the frame. Uh, you can change the size by going to display uh, and a preview plane size and increase that. Maybe, for example, 10 is going to twice the size uh, of the plane. And as you can see here, by giving it an MD slider, uh, let me explain here. Uh, when you give the surface, uh, the UV coordinate is actually not a point. Uh, it's a UV coordinate, not an XYZ coordinate. Uh, to understand that, uh, actually, we have two uh, kind of axes in a 3D space. Uh, one is the X, uh, Y, and Z, obviously, which we define as the 3D space. We turn around it like this, and we define it as X, Y, and Z. Uh, there is also a relative axes. Uh, or coordinates. For example, if you have a curve, uh, what you can do uh, if you are a creative person is that you can say the start of the curve is zero, and I'm going to make a curve uh, axis on this uh, base curve. So what is going to happen is that you can say, for example, this is 100, and just divide this curve into a series of lines to define the distance. So if you say, uh, I need a five unit uh, U. Actually, it's going to be for the, uh, a curve is going to be T called T. It's going to be five units on the curve, okay? Which, uh, which is defining the axis here. Uh, when you have a surface, uh, you actually have two axes uh, for a NURB surface. Uh, one is going to be a U and another one is going to be a V. And uh, what you have to do is to define uh, those two numbers uh, as an UV coordinate. So for example, if you say 10, uh, 5, and because we don't have a z, uh, z, we don't give anything to that, uh, it's going to say 10 units on U and 5 units on V, and I mean this coordinate, okay? This is going to be a coordinate on the surface. If you have a solid, which is going to be, uh, maybe I can show that with a yellow, uh, maybe we extrude that even in a direction. So it's going to give you a complicated solid. I don't know what's going to be the final results, but assume that this is a solid. Uh, you can also move uh, in the third dimension, which is called W. So it's going to be uh, in a solid U, V, W. Whenever you see that, that means that you can also move in a curved axis in the space. Uh, but for now, because we have a surface, we just have to use a UV. 
Uh, another most important thing is that uh, coordinates, let me just see if I can delete this. Okay, uh, is that for example for the U it's like 0 to 100 and for V it's like 0 to maybe 20 for example, okay. The problem is that we don't need these numbers, maybe we just want to say 0 to 1, 0 to 1, which means uh, we want to unitize uh, these axes. Uh, to do that you just have to right click on the surface and if you select reparameterize what it's going to do it's going to give you uh, a UV coordinate which is between 0 and 1. For example if I uh, go to the params menu and in the primitive select a domain 2 and just give this a panel uh, you can see this is actually uh, the domain for the U and V which we really don't know uh, and uh, we have to always check that out if we want to use these numbers uh, but we, if we right click on the surface inputs and reparameterize it's going to be from uh, 0 to 1 and 0 to 1 so you can uh, either reparameterize on this or in the input of a surface doesn't really matter so remember that this is really important if you want to use uh, 0 to 1 and 0 to 1 for the UV and that's uh, why we use a great tool called MD slider which is like MD a slider and it's between 0, uh, 0 and 1, 1. It's a UV coordinate we can use that. If you double click that you can see that it has a U, uh, XY domain which is actually a UV. We are using this as a UV domain but you can change that if you want to but for us it's a perfect choice. So now you can see that we can uh, change the location of the point it's going to give us the point uh, at the UV which is exactly this point it's also going to give us uh, in the params menu let's just put a plane on it just delete that uh, there's also going to be a plane for us which we're going to use we also have the normal direction so if I just say uh, display uh, vector cost uh, vector display and uh, put the anchor for the P which is the point and the normal to the vector uh, you can see a vector here let's just make that a little bit bigger expression maybe 10 uh, 10 uh, star x which means 10 times and now you can see that even I, th I don't think that you can yeah you can change the arrow size also like this uh, a screen size and just increase that Okay, that's better. Uh, so now you can see that you can see the normal direction also from the normal output. Uh, the U direction is going to be in this direction in the X and V is going to be in that direction. It's actually uh, giving you the UV directions at any point you want and uh, the normal also. So that is also really useful. Uh, let's just turn these off because we don't need that. Okay. Uh, now that we have this, uh, let me go to the next step which is a bounding box. So uh, you can go to surface primitive and use this bounding box to find the bounding box here. And uh, if you right click you can see there is a union box. The union box is really useful if you for example, uh, let me just show you here by moving the object a little bit up and assume that I have this moved surface and with the shift key add the base surface. Uh, as you can see it's going to be per object but if I right click and say, uh, select union box it's going to be one unit union box for both of them. Okay so remember that you can always switch between these uh, here. Okay now that we have this uh, bounding box we can give the surface uh, the bounding box for the surface to the uh, C input which is going to be the geometry we want to contain and for the P it's the bounding box orientation plane. This is the plane that the bounding box sits on and now we can see that we can give this uh, plane to that. So that's a creati uh, creative way if you want to just change the direction of the plane easily here. Okay, So that is also a way we can define the bounding box here. Okay. So that's how we can define a bounding box around an object with a uh, evaluate surface. The next one is going to be make a series of plane on this edge. Okay, so what you have to do is to 